Hello everyone, my name is Sinmer and we've got something new for you today. However, before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to tell you that nearly 70% of people who watch our videos are not subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you could do me a huge favor by liking the video, commenting below, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that bell. It really helps out the channel and lets me know that you're liking what I'm making. Alright, without further ado, let's get into the video. Hello everyone, my name is Samir and this is Star Zack version 0.95.1 ARC6. And this is well we carry your Gemini. As you can see, we have a lot of Geminis. A lot of Geminis. And uh, if you're wondering, the range is that. <laughs> so they can go forever. So what does this one look like? Well, we have some expanded missile racks, heavy armor, and reinforced bulkheads, pretty much standard on any carrier that uses missiles. We have military subsystems and assault package. If we were using any form of, say, point defense like heavy machine guns, we would switch this over to assault pack to escort package. But it only increases them, only increases the range by a little bit. So we're looking at going from like 450 to 480. It's not really that important. This gives us a little bit more armor, which is really nice. Gives us an extra hole integrity and extra flux, flux capacity. So, how does this work? Well, we uh, have a hypervelocity driver, we have a heavy mauler. These are sort of the um, super long range, can actually hit the enemy before they hit us uh, sort of deals. Now, this ship is not particularly fast, but if you have enough of them, they can at least hold the enemy back. The other thing is here, we have our Typhoon Re Reaper launcher, and this is the main damage dealing aspect of the ship. For our fighters, we have we have thunders, thunder heavy interceptors. So how does this usually work? Well, all the interceptors go forward and die. <laughs> the thunders have made a paper mache. The other thing that happens is that the Gemini they close in with the enemy and they start shooting them with their reaper torpedoes. Now thing is, the Gemini's, whip, the Gemini's special is reserve deployment. That means that every fighter bay pushes out at least one extra ship. Now, that works fantastically with Talit, with uh, Thunders, because that means they get an extra ship. So they get essentially half a bay, half a fighter bay's worth every use. Now, if a fighter gets destroyed and the reserved one is still out, the reserved one becomes the new fighter. So if you have two fighters and then you reserve out a third one and then one of the first one, one of the first two gets destroyed, you still have two fighters and it doesn't get it doesn't get pulled back in to the reserve. Now what's great about Thunders is they have really long range. They have an ion cannon so they can do MP damage. They have light machine guns, a light machine gun so they can do shield damage. And they have Stormer SRM launchers so they can do armor damage. What this means is these guys, when massed, pretty much slaughter anything smaller than a cruiser. This, <laughs> when massed, slaughters pretty much everything bigger than a frigate. And these more or less are just there to give the ship continual damage. So do we so we don't need to worry about getting, uh, you know, shot by missiles or all that much, considering that we have 27 of these things. And uh, typically, the fighters will stick around them, and then they'll go stick around the enemy ships and basically shut down any missiles that they're going to be launching. So it works pretty well. So let's go ahead and quick save. After my ex Ooh, that doesn't look... Oh, wait, you guys can't see it. Basically, um, we, we started saving on a frame where uh, something was still sliding out in the UI. So then it got stuck between two frames and was just going back and forth. So, let's see. These Gemini tend to do a pretty good job. I have no idea if they can take on remnant fleets. My assumption is that they can. Now, that assumption could be wrong. But that is what I think. Let's get a little bit closer and aggro someone. Who did we get? Ooh, super guy. Okay, well, while he comes to fight us, we're going to wait, then we're going to save, and then we're going to go fight him. Let's do this. Alright, so, as always, 
I'm going to just deploy everyone that I can deploy. If these guys had demods on them, we would be able to do a bit more. And I guess I'll send about half of them over here and the other half over there. Yeah, this is way easier if I just do this. I just say assault and assault. Then they split up evenly regardless. But we're just going to do that so they can get a nice split there. And so that then when we encounter the actual remnants, when we encounter the actual remnants, they will uh, be able to slaughter everything. So we have a battleship coming in on a bunch of other ships. I have not tested these guys out against the remnants, so you guys are saying what I'm saying. And, uh, well, you're gonna, we're, we're both gonna find out how effective these are. <laughs> but they are effective against their deployment points and standard capitals, so I'm assuming they will do, you know, decently well. Will they do as well as a Mora? As a Mora fleet? Maybe not. But uh, they seem to clean that guy up pretty quickly. This guy as well just insta dies. We have this carrier here. It's doing what it can. Its uh, shields seem to be holding out pretty well. <clears throat> it seems to be losing armor in some areas. All right, let's go ahead and pull assault. And uh, he seems to be doing... He's losing armor in places, so he's going to start dying pretty soon if things don't change. And, uh, well, well, the nice part about these ships is that they can go and chase down the enemy. The downside about these ships is, well, they don't really have much DPS in terms of their fighters. Because the Moors, if you recall, they have a Thunder, a broadsword and a and a uh, warthog which basically means they have good overall you know can do everything that's thunders good uh, damage to shields from the broadswords and good damage to armor from the warthogs the main thing that's fantastic about these ships is that this entire fleet can bring its entire uh, suite of fighters to bear on one single ship if they really want to now, he is starting to die. <laughs> Everyone, oh, there he goes. <laughs> he is starting to die, instantly dead. The main problem that the Gemini have is that they are particularly fast, and they don't have any major way to reduce damage. So when this Radiant starts shooting this Gemini, what's going to happen is once he gets him to overload, he's more or less just going to be able to kill him. And unless another Gemini steps up and starts trying to tank for him, he's pretty much just going to die. If the enemy fleet has sufficient point defense, they can more or less remove the fighters from the equation since Gem since talons are made of paper. Okay, it looks like we lost Asia. Or we lost two Geminis. Now we have some of those reinforcements coming in. And the main problem here is that in order to kill this Radiant, they need to probably get rid of most of this supporting fleet so that they can focus on it and then just Reaper it to death. The problem is, that's probably not going to happen particularly easily for them. Now, we do have this nice battle line here. This guy seems to be in the middle. A lot of people seem to be focusing on the Radiant. But as you can see, this Brilliant is starting to take some armor damage. Not a huge amount. Look over here, he's sort of taking damage. He's taken uh, you know, a decent amount of armor damage. But uh, we're seeing that the Radiant is able to just start like chasing people down. It's able to just start chasing people down and kill them, killing them. And it doesn't seem to have taken any real, any real damage. Now that said, <clears throat> these are ships that cost seven <laughs> to deploy at full cost. So, I'm not expecting a whole lot here, and this guy is keeping these guys extra busy. But uh, he's going to start dying pretty soon as those missiles are hammering away at him. So, looks like we lost another of the Gemini. Alright, that's the last of them. So, if they're going to win, they're going to win with the ships they've got. If not, then not. Down he goes, so now they can all this can sweep back in and adjust a deal all the damage. 
Now, the Radiant still hasn't taken any heavy losses. That was a Gemini. He has really taken a huge amount of damage, and there we are losing Gemini's here, left and right. So, while they can kill the smaller ships, they do struggle to kill the larger ones. It's really the big doom here of the Gemini, this kind of massed fleet build. They don't have the longevity that they need, and they don't have the missile slots to really do a whole lot of damage. Really, you need those Warthogs to be able to tank via missiles. So you need all those hangar units to be able to tank via missiles if you're going to use torpedoes. And not being able to really soak a whole lot of damage means that these Gemini are kind of just dead once they get focused by any kind of capital which is exactly what is happening here. This Radiant has killed like three ships by itself. In record time. So, how's it working? Well, yeah, it's alright, I guess. They need to clean up this stuff. He's still alive. <laughs> and then they need to... They need to clean up all these smaller ships as well so that they can focus on the larger ones. But it's taking them a while to do that because Thunders don't have a high... Thunders don't have a really high DPS. They... They're okay, but they're not particularly, like, quick killing things. Even with this guy surrounded, effectively, he can just sort of, you know, do his thing. He's gonna kill this guy next. There isn't a whole lot that he can do about it. Aside from just, well, scream until he explodes. Alright, so they finally took out another Lumen. That's nice. And uh, now this guy's gonna die. Because he has no real response. And then he can just sort of go around, you know, taking out whoever he wants. Because what needs to happen is essentially the... Supporting ships need to get destroyed first. Then this guy will die. We already said that. But this will be able to just start carving through them until that happens. Even with all of them here facing him, he can really just sort of do his thing. Because the officer piloting the ship is really good at keeping their hard flux down. And even when their hard flux is pretty high, they're pretty good at... Uh, they tend to be somewhat decent at maintaining, uh, at not overloading, unless they're just completely overwhelmed. As you can see, they have amazing flux dissipation as well. So, in order to keep these guys from being able to just vent without venting, just passively, you know, vent their flux, Oh, well, it's called something else if it's passive. It's like disperse or something like that to you know passively get rid of its flux. Uh, it doesn't really take much. You can just let it go. You can just keep its shields down for a second and lose all its flux very quickly. As we can tell, the, the battle is now turning very rapidly as Gemini start falling left and right. So, can this take on an in-game fleet? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't. However, it is pretty good at doing other things. So let's go ahead and load. And then we'll go see how well it does against other things. So, if we were to have it go up against the Ultra Redacted, which is over here somewhere. It's actually, like, right above rubber, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong, but I don't think I am. It's, like, over here somewhere. There it is, right here. But we don't have, um, Fenzer's Jump. So the good thing about this fleet is it can actually defeat the is I think it can actually defeat <laughs> the Ultra Redacted. So none of these guys have any of those on it, so it doesn't really matter. 
let's go ahead and engage this guy. All right, everyone, do what you do best. We're not piloting any of these, so we're just going to let them do their thing. And we're going to select the person in the very back, and then we're going to pause the game and come out here and just watch the battle. We're going to try and move the camera as little as possible. So, the Ziggura, its moats are really good against spiders. However, the Gemini can all force out extra fighters more or less for free. But those moats are really good at taking things out. So let's go ahead and push out another Gemini. And basically every time it uses its focus, it's probably going to kill something. So, there is a sort of time limit here. For there is a sort of time limit here for how long they can take to kill this. And as always, the majority of their damage is going to come from the Reaper Torpedo. So, it's going to come from the Thunders, keeping this guy really busy, keeping his flux really high, and then the Reaper is just, just so happening to be able to hit him when he's very high on flux. When he's forced to come out of his... when he's forced to come out of B-space. We can see Jim and I are getting disabled left and right, and he's kind of maxed out on his flux. So, if they can win, they're gonna win now. Because this is the real problem that phase ships have. They get high on hard flux, hard flux, and then they kind of just... The AI doesn't know what to do. It doesn't realize it needs to like pull away and then and then vent all its flux and then come back. So it's just gonna sit here and get reapered to death. <laughs> so now if it's now as you can see, here's something about this about this. You notice how there's no fighters right now. <laughs> it's because the moats are really good at clearing them out. So if you're fighting of this guy. You can win with fighters, but not really. You're going to be killing them with your weapons. Uh, you're not going to be killing them with fighters at all. Oh no! <laughs> Friendly fire! <laughs> Friendly fire isn't... <laughs> Alright, so... They're going to keep trying to do their thing. But will that be enough? No, that one hit. No, it's small. But no, it didn't actually. Alright, they are trying. It seems to be dodging those Reapers just well enough. So, the. Unless some Reapers hit, it might actually win this be kind of interesting. It's able to disable all of the enemy fighters, and so unless it eats a Reaper, it should be okay. But for killing one of the hardest early game fights in the game, well mid game fights in the game, this isn't too bad. But it does seem as though it's taking chip damage which is going it, which is slowly killing it. So there is that. And there it goes. So can this fleet destroy that? Yes, it can. So can claim victory. Ship recovery. Everything. <laughs> and we'll just leave that here. So, do we still have enough people? Yes, we do. More than enough for... Thank you, Starliner. So we have more than enough for that. So, your question next is, can these guys take on the Super Redact? The answer is most likely no, but let's go look anyway. Alright. But... That's, that's because we, we fixed it. Um, okay, so we fixed that one. We haven't fixed this one. 
Okay, well, let's engage this. Now, I don't think this is going to work. But hey, let's try it anyway. Just to see what happens. I don't think it's going to work. Because this is a very... This is a... Passively strong enough? Like, medium fleet that can sort of do things, but not really. And these, like, Omega ships are really good at dodging missiles, dodging Reaper torpedoes, and just in general overwhelming things. The real thing that needs to happen here, if these guys want to have a chance, is for their fighters to overwhelm these, uh, these, these, uh, Tesseracts. These Doritos. The problem is, the Doritos have really, really strong point defense. So, this fight is going about as well as expected. <laughs> so he's just going to, you know, kill all of them. He's probably going to kill all of them, no problem. And while they are forcing out some more fighters, it just isn't going to be enough. Because these guys, when they get high on flux, they can just leave. And then, you know, get rid of all their flux. And then they can come back. And for them, it's easy. Right, <laughs> well, I guess. That's the crazy DPS. So they have some armor damage, no armor damage. Uh, some hull damage, but not much. Once he's done tearing through these guys, right, killing that guy most likely, he's going to slam into this back line and just destroy them. But this guy, yeah, still hasn't taken enough damage to really make this something that he needs to be worried about. And once he dies, which will be very fast, he's going to come right over here. As you can see, it seems to be working pretty well for them. The Tesseract. <laughs> Not everyone else. <laughs> and so now, now getting pincered by these two ex just incredibly high DPS ships, uh, the Gemini are not going to have any chance whatsoever. Alright, so, just hang out in the star for a second. And as we can see, it's just, they don't have it up, they don't have it in them to take down these. But, these Gemini, for an early game fleet, uh, of, of battle carriers, I suppose, which you can use, which you can turn them into just using the assault package. They're pretty good for what they do. You just need to give them thunders, a hyper velocity driver, a heavy mauler, and a typhoon reaper launcher. The best part is you don't really need this. It helps, I guess, if they have demons, but these guys are cheap enough to kick out there. But you really don't need to worry about it too much. They cost like. The deployment cost is like seven or so. Yeah, it's like seven, nine. They're relatively cheap. But yeah, there you go. Those are what I recommend if you haven't upgraded to a drover yet or you don't want to use drovers for whatever reason, or you just like having more Reaper torpedoes. Uh, the advantage of the drover is that it can have four small Reapers on it. So that means it can essentially dump all of its reapers at once into something if it wants to. Uh, the AI isn't going to do that most of the time, but that also means you could have a thunder and a warthog, or two thunders, uh, for a total of four or six, whenever it uses deployment. And that can overwhelm the enemy pretty quickly. The only problem is the drover, if I recall correctly, require costs more to deploy. So you would have to use uh, derelict operations to swarm out the drovers. But all right, there we go. Guys, my name is Benjamin Mer. This has been Star Sector version 0.95.1a RC6. But leave me a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and just share the video with whoever you think would like, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.